Chris Long joins me, and you can learn what he is up to by going to longyards.com. We're going to be talking about kind of a unique storage opportunity for everybody. Again, it's longyards.com, and I really appreciate your time here today, Chris. Say to be here, Jack, and I love talking real estate. So I got to find out here first. Could you, first of all, explain what your company does and then secondly, how did you find your way to this? I love it. My company helps people create financial freedom through self-storage and industrial outside storage. And so that, that's what it did for me. And that's what I'm helping other people achieve, whether or not they want to partner or be a franchisee. So what Long Yards does, we take land, typically industrial and most industrial or commercial, and we take the self-storage concept to it where you're basically bringing multiple tenants, in our case, it's small business tenants, and we're basically renting them out, recur billing, and, you know, these tenants need a space and that's what we do. And we add the long box products, which, you know, I'm doing the podcast in a long box and we have long offices and, you know, just provides more value and increase the revenue at the location. And we're a franchisor. So we're expanding and a little bit about us in a quick nutshell, but happy to expand. Well, let's start with the storage part of it. So these long boxes, they kind of come full up and then you can erect them in, in what, if a few minutes a day, what, how long does that take? This was built in under 45 minutes. So it's like an Ikea unit that's packed. And then it comes to your either location. We get them a rent inside the long yard, at our long yards. And basically, they come from Europe. Beautiful products. Steel, 20 gauge. And just like you said, they, they fold and unfold. And they're a pretty heavy-duty built unit. I and mean, you could park a boat on top of this. And they're pretty solid, very durable, and ready to last a long time. Forklift attachments, crane attachments. Very versatile. That's the long yard's core values to make things adaptable and these products fit perfectly with their business model. So, you know, in my part of the world, we're, we're seeing more and more secondary use of train cars and in a few other things. Is that, is that what you're up against? Is that the, your primary competition or it's funny? Like the competition it's in the industrial outside storage, because like my business, you know, is a secondary, we obviously need the real estate to make the business work. So, but in terms of the real estate and the uses on it, you were up against like your traditional iOS truck parking and, and that, but you know, we, we're not seeing, you know, like kind of like an Airbnb truck type more, I guess, railroad. I've seen and heard about that a little bit where people are taking railroads and the units and cut them up in their rentals, but I kind of stay away from that. It's more industrial commercialized iOS, except more compact. Think of it as a laydown yard, except a mini laydown yard and multiple of them. What well, can you back up there for a second? You keep you mentioned iOS a couple of times. What is, what do you mean by that? Yeah, so I guess it's maybe a new term going around iOS, like industrial outside storage. Okay, sure. Yeah. So the other a- aspect would be you know people building self storage facilities. How yeah. how many when it comes to the cost associated with your product versus building something, I'd have to think there's a pretty significant difference there. Well, that's the thing about long yards, which is pretty unique. It's we have time on our side and cost to build. We're much faster, much much lower expense to build. And our return on investment is much faster. It's relative versus the real estate. If you're in central Miami paying, you know, a million dollars an acre, you, you got to go vertical with climate control. But in terms of a lot of cut and paste industrial commercial real estate, four acres plus, you could have our model up running in a matter of a short months, quite literally. And you could be pre-leasing up during your construction time and your return on investment. I mean, you know, it's, it's fencing, it's modular. So it's, it's a much quicker ROI, you know, but it's beautiful. Anyway, yeah, it, it, it's faster and it's a quicker ROI. Well, can you talk a little bit about the cost then? Like what, the, the, is this a standard one that you're sitting in right now? Is or Do they come in different sizes? How does that all work? Yes, yeah, so like this is kind of like the, the little brother of long yards. So long box is a model inside the long yards. So just for, for context and perspective. And the long yards, in my for numbers, I bought my first facility for 470000 We put 700000 into it. And not long after, it's worth 3.6 on the cash flow. Now it's worth easily over 4.5 just because the cash flow increased. So like the, the amount of money you put in versus how fast you get out, the return could be anywhere up to sometimes 
17 months on what you rent versus what you paid. And even at a gross rent multiplier, of, you're seeing in a case is 2.5 to 5. So uh, different, you know, different terminology for different people. They have different formulas, but the return is very fast. And you're seeing one part of a, of a complex ecosystem, but it's basically yards, long boxes, and long offices, and they all drive revenue at a location. It's just what does your business need and when? And that's what we provide. Hmm. So, you know, it's been an old adage, especially in the real estate world, when, you, when you're when you dealing with some, anything when it, when it comes to building. You can either have it fast, you can have it quality, or you can have it cheap. You can pick two. What? Where is the deficit here? Like, there's got to be a catch somewhere. Well, I love it. I was the contractor. I'm a licensed contractor, and I ran my construction company for 15 years, and I used to say it all the time. <laughs> you either want quality and but you can't get quality, speed, and price. But it, it's not like that for long yards. It's just in terms of, think of you're building a, a 40-unit high-rise of building versus a semi, you know, a smaller apartment on a piece of development. So it's not, it's just the process. It's much faster and simpler for a long yards versus a lot of other building projects because it's a lot simpler of a construction project. Obviously, you can't get the higher rates of income because you're not building a facility in brick and mortar, but for the cost versus the return, it's much faster and less expensive and quicker to build out. So it's it's hard to compare in like a service-based industry where you put those three, but you got to look at the formulas of different projects and versus what they bring in. And that's why I like it. truck parking is so great. It's like put gravel down and you park trucks. Are you compromising on quality? I don't think so because it's a, it's a supply and demand. You're, you're, there's a, you're, you're fulfilling the need for the truck parking. And I don't, I don't, you know, there's, there's a cost and a demand that comes with that. So do you take these and put them like right next to each other, side by side, butt them up against each other and make kind of a facility out of it? Or are they standalone? And is there a minimum number that you have? I know these are some really basic questions, but this is really yeah. fascinating, like regarding it. the construction of these. Yeah, I, I just wish I was like doing my interview on top of one of these and you saw my facility because it, it to put it into context. So like I got 10 acres with 67 yards and they range from 2,000 square feet to 20,000 square feet. And in those yards, these long boxes sit. So the context of like how many of these do you have, it's, it's, it's how many of these are inside a long yards facility. So if you're a landscaper, let's say, you got four trailers, you got equipment and you have your yard, your yard is let's say 100 by 100 feet you know, you're paying us every month for that yard. And in the yard, we could bring you these long boxes. And these long boxes, we will charge additionally, obviously for the usage on a rent, on a monthly re- recurring rent, same thing for a long office. So we have these models as well. It's an office that folds and unfolds that we could bring in the long yard. So again, the long yard is like the big brother in the long box, but our, our facility kind of like answering your question more clearly, it's not built out of these. These are complementing to the long yards facility, if that's clear. Yeah, I, I think I'm following you because if you go to your website, it it's you, there's a lot of video and images. And it's a very well put together design. It it shows any all kinds of storage, but it's almost more like a, a fenced area versus exactly exactly. So long yards, my facility quite literally is a long yard. Chris Long, it all goes well together, but it's 200 feet by 2,000 feet long. You got one road in the middle and you got yards on both sides. And in those yards, we service small businesses, construction, blue collar, homeowners. And then in the yards, we have these units. <laughs> so just kind of like expanding and then going in the box. I, I get it now. So the, so you have, you rent out a yard. <laughs> yeah. Which is fenced in. Yeah. Within that yard, that fenced in area, you might have a long box or two or how many you want, right? Exactly. Exactly. It, it's crazy. It's, I don't know how to explain it any easier. I like, hey, I, got, I rent out a yard and in the yard, you can park your equipment. It's like some people hear iOS. Some people say mini lay down yard. Everyone has to like have it in their head of how they think or hear the word to get it. Sometimes it's like, I don't know. I I try to find different ways to to explain it as easy as I can, but you know, sometimes you got to see it. I guess some people just need to see it. It's so different. Yeah. Now I'm I'm starting to follow you here now. So the other aspect, you mentioned that some of these long boxes are 
also can be made into or our offices are they in you're you're in canada and some other regions where weather could be an issue are they insulated i mean these you look like you're just sitting in a tin box right now <laughs> i do so yeah I'm, I'm in florida right now so this is a beautiful unit for florida and basically this is for like your traditional storage goods now the long offices they're more heavy duty they're insulated they have an r rating there's windows doors european windows and doors two windows and a door and you can make them modular so you can add more but that's pretty sufficient for what they're needed for which is a little office but if you, you know they're eight foot high and just a nice cubicle we have them seven by ten you get them seven by thirteen we get them all the way seven by twenty and we can actually get them where they become universal where they expand so you can go 14 by 20 or you know 14 by 40 so they're like little lego blocks for both the long boxes and the long offices so could you could you give us a rundown of how these numbers work then like because I would imagine, you know, storage units is 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 a hot market right now. Yeah. Everybody wants has been trying to acquire storage units, and I'm seeing them built everywhere, at least in my market. I would imagine you're talking about something that's fairly cost effective for what you're getting in rent. Could you could you kind of break some things down? What is a what is a standard yard in your market's rent for? And then the addition of the boxes. Right. So the yard is very market pending. In different markets, you're getting at different rates, but your build-out costs are relatively the same. So what we're doing is we're targeting markets that have a lower cost per square foot for industrial land versus a higher income rate for industrial outside storage. So, you know, it, it's it's very market pending. So if you're looking at Florida, for instance, you're probably getting around between 25 to 35 cents per square foot for iOS, industrial outside storage which is like, you know, a category that we can classify ourselves as. Now your build out cost for a long yards on top of the real estate is roughly $1.30 per square foot. So just kind of quick numbers, if you're a buck a 30 square foot, I mean, you, you could just kind of start to put the numbers together. If you're renting it out at, let's say 20 cents, your yearly NOI is $2.40 and, and your build out is a buck 30 a square foot. You know, so it's a quick return. It's a quick, and that is not including everything we can inside because you're adding on top of that because you're paying per square foot for the yard, the long office, the long box. We provide camera cameras. We rent out the cameras. We provide power in some cases, depending on the logistics. It's additional, you know, charge there. So, like foundationally, that's a good number to be like, huh, okay, that's a quick return, and everything else is just kind of steroids on top of it. So, would it be fair to say that I'm I'm kind of miscategorizing this you're you're probably a bit more closer to what a trailer park would be versus what a storage units would be since you're talking about providing electrical and and a few other amenities not really because no one's living there and and it's not it's more commercial real estate it falls in the categories of you know it, it's the power is to charge batteries or like have an, an odd tool you need to whatever the case may be. We do have some small businesses that will, you know, work part-time, whether it be a welder in the yard. But it, it's, you know, I, I like to draw a line in the sand and say it's not mobile. It's not, or no one's living in these locations. It's more on the commercial side. So I, I would speak to it more on the self-storage language where we have all the control and the rights where if the tenant doesn't pay, we can lock them out where, you, you know, on the terms of the rights, well, first of all, zoning and then rights of the tenants. So I would say definitely more self storage being in that direction, but you know it's different. It's definitely different, but it's more. I would say more self storage than RV or mobile home. Okay. Well, if you're interested in what Chris is talking about here, and maybe it would add some clarity, it would go to the website. So, longyards.com. That's going to be a clickable link in the show notes, and there's a lot of great photos on here, so you can really see what Chris is referring to. And if you found some value in what we're talking about today, do us a quick favor and share it with one of your investor friends. And if you're on YouTube, like and subscribe. And this has been a great conversation so far, Chris, and I really appreciate you fielding some of these very basic questions that I have on this. But I, I, I'm finding this 
interesting to the point where I think we would all benefit if you could kind of give us an example. I mean, you said you franchise this and you actually help other people find their financial freedom with this strategy. Can you share us a recent student story or, or how, how this worked out for somebody? Yeah, it's great. I, and that's the part I love to talk about. So I'll start off with the foundation. Like I was a carpenter myself. I could not find yard space that I just needed for my business. All I needed was a space for my four trailers, my tools, equipment, because my house and my front yard looked like a junkyard. My wife was done with it. So I built a business around my needs. I had a commercial property. I figured if I need a small yard space, somebody else does. I went all in at least up in six weeks. It was like, oh my God, wow, I have something here. I then sold my house and everything I had. And I went to Florida to expand the business. Now we're expanding in Central Florida, Texas, North Carolina. And as an example, a new franchise you just signed up there in, te- in Tennessee, in Memphis. So now we give them the cookbook, the blueprint. We marry them to the real estate because we've done it before. We know how to identify the real estate. We know the nuances. We take a franchisee and we, and we, we do it in two orders. We either find the real estate first and then we find the franchisee or we find the franchisee and we have what's called the go long or go home guarantee. And they pay us 5,000 bucks and they secure their territory for hundred days. And then we find the real estate. So we can do it in both directions. But in terms of the story from, these are high W2 employees. They loved real estate, could quite understand it, wanted to get in. Instead of being an LP, like a lot of people do, we say, you know what? You could own hundred percent of the real estate. We'll just give you the cookbook on it, on how to bring up the revenue. So now we're bringing, we're finding, we found the real estate for them. We're putting a long air model. We're showing them everything that needs to be done. We're helping them hire a manager. The complete blueprint for the construction. We even help source contractors, and now they're having a more passive cash flow lifestyle. And literally, they're doing this because they got into an accident. They realized it. You know, their W two could end if they hurt themselves on the job. Or whatever happens, and they needed an external resource for revenue instead of kind of going with the grain or what everyone else is doing. They want something a little more high cash flow, a little bit more of a support system. So they, you know, we partnered with Long Arts, and now we're helping them create that. So based on the construction needs here, I, I would imagine they're all over the place. It, 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 whether you are just providing the yard and maybe one of the boxes, there's probably going to have to have electrical run. What type of other expertise does somebody have to, what do you else do you have to source to make this happen? Well, it, it looks simple, but it's not easy. I rebuilt my first location five times. Because the little nuances, the road width, the gate width, the, the best size of yards, your, your ideal client, your avatar, how to contact your avatar, your marketing, your lease up, keep your call. We have wholesale pricing on all of our materials. So foundationally, like, okay, you're building a yard, right? But it, it's a lot more than that. But, you know, as electrical, for an example, we do underground conduits. So we got to make sure that the warehouse or there's existing electrical. And that's the beautiful thing about our model. You can take messed up land or land that only has electricity and now turn it into a beautiful asset. And with the long air model, that's what we do. So you need electricity. And then at that point, we run underground conduits, which usually branch off to larger upgraded power units to smaller for 110 individual breaker units. Uh, some of the larger yards, we have larger power sources. A example, there are welders. We'll maybe run a 50 amp dedicated for those. Uh, but that's how we run the electrical as an example. And the rest is we have the consistent same fencing, same lawn boxes, same long offices. It's all branded nice and blue with our colors and we same software. And that's the kind of cookie cutter assembly line that we've built out and we're building out for our partners. Hmm. So I would imagine at, since you have some situations where people are actually running their businesses out of those locations, do you have to, you'd have to have bathroom facilities and and other as well, right? Well, it's funny. We have 67 yards at our first location. We only have two around two of our clients that actually are there on a more regular basis. Like, Think of this more storage. It's definitely more storage. It's just our adaptability to accommodate different types of businesses because different markets have different demands. So, but in that case, we have a porta potty, a clean porta potty that's that is you know in the central of the yard. And in their yard, if they are so happy to be active and they want their own, then just rent one of those. So it's really like super simple, clean, fast. Yeah, we don't need to build a fancy warehouse where people need to have a beautiful bathroom. It's like these are blue collar builders that just need a space in the most cases store their stuff during this process of you 
putting this together, especially now being a, a franchiser, I, can you talk a little bit about, you said you had to build that one yard five times over. What are some of those lessons you learned in developing this? A lot. The width of the world, you know, how to move mobile trucks around the width of the gates the best width, best width of the yard there's a lot of little micro nuances that you never imagine until you literally just go through it and rebuild it several times the, the width of the gates the height how high to keep them off the ground these little nuances the snow i'm in canada we have to factor in my first location i moving away from canada because that's funny thing our biggest expense is snow removal so we have to be very mindful of how you pile the snow how you design your yards for that so all these little nuances that had to be you know, we built it out in phases too. So just for context, it's not like I built it and then rebuilt it five times. It's just, I learned my lessons that as I built up my next phase of yards, it's okay, I'm going to add and pivot this. I'm going to tweak this. I'm going to do it this way. And those are some of the lot of learning lessons. We probably moving forward, I can add about a 20% efficiency to our existing facilities just because of the nuances I've learned. You know, I, I had recently, I, I manage an apartment building near me here and and I recently had a resident who just kind of took off and I have, a, I have to now deal with all of the stuff and everything in there based on some of the photos I'm seeing on your site. That's, that's a, that pales in comparison to what you might get stuck with. If somebody isn't playing, paying their rent, like how do you handle some of that? Great question. So I'm an entrepreneur. And I think one of the things we do is solve problems, right? The whole long year model was built on me solving problems. And when I was a landlord, I started off as a carpenter. I bought my first house, turned it into a duplex. Okay, this is great. Bought the second house, turned it into a duplex. Now in Canada, it wasn't long until I had a bad tenant. Now trying to get a bad tenant out, it took me a year, 12 months, and they broke all my windows on the way out. And I had to go to court only to get them out. And I literally had to sign a letter of recommendation for them saying they're great tenants in front of the judge in order for them to get out. And that was the only, and the judge agreed to that in the system. So at that point, I was like, the system A is broken in Canada anyways. B, this is not ethically right. And C, I should be in control of my real estate and my business. So immediately I sold my two duplexes and I changed my entire model and philosophy. I went into commercial real estate. And now if a tenant doesn't pay, I always make the joke, my number one gate, my, my number one employee, it's my gate. Because first of all, five days after they don't pay, the gate locks them out. And then they're chasing me, which frankly, it's the way it should be. If a tenant doesn't pay, they shouldn't be in control. I'm in control. So I lock them out. And then the lien process starts. After a certain amount of time, I start auctioning their stuff and I could sell it. And then I, you know, there's a, if, there's, if there's additional money, I mail them a check. If not, I recoup my cost. But it's like a 45-day process. It's not dragging on and on and aggravated, chasing people. It's like, no, nope, get their stuff out on to the next one. That's one of the most beautiful things about my business, recurring revenue, and you're in control. Hmm. So you're talking about locking the gate. Can you do that remotely, or is that something that boots on the ground has to go to get it done? No, it's a self-storage. So we have software. So if you want to rent, just walk through the life cycle right now. You pull up my facility. There's a QR code. You can either call us, or you push the QR code. You see what yards are available, what you like. You click it. You upload your credit card. You sign a lease. You get a welcome video. Here, here's your unit number and your payments in the system now, recurred billing. Now that gate and that software is, is an ecosystem. So if you don't pay on the five days that your billing is set to, you get a late fee and you're locked out. And now you got to upload your new credit card or contact us to finalize the payment. So that's, that's pretty much the life cycle of the billing. So, you know, and I keep revisiting this, but what is one of your typical yards rent for? I think our average yard is probably around $750 a month. We have a larger yard that rents for $2,200 a month. We have smaller yards that rent for $290 a month. So we have a, a very wide range. But and we're, we're figuring out right now, based on the data that we're evolving with, the, you know, the most common size yard we want to rent to. And it's a bit of a balance of the yards. The more smaller yards, the more space you lose getting to the smaller yards. But the more you rent them for, or vice versa, you have bigger yards. You charge a little bit less per square foot, but you have more space. So it, it, it varies a little bit. But the, the key thing is our model is made to adapt. So as we're leasing up, our fencing moves around. So we kind of cater to the market as we're evolving. 
and and mm-hmm. we move around and cater to that. So that's that's a philosophy we take, and we're big on innovation, adaptability, and we let the market tell us what works and what doesn't. So that's an important point there. Then it, you're not set in stone. Like if you set up your yards to a certain width and depth, you could alter that for format and if if need be and that's and there's a couple layers to this the first thing is from the consumer perspective absolutely things move around as a contractor i'm growing my business i need more space i inv- i move a fence and now i have more space and that was pretty simple and that's the, the the problem that we solved in the marketplace when i was a small contractor i needed space i didn't want to sign a three four five year triple net lease for a two acre lot at five to eight grand a month I didn't need that. I needed a smaller space just for what I needed when I needed it. It didn't exist. And I didn't want to sign up for a long lease. We're month to month. So you have no fit up costs. You have what you need and you're not locked into a long term. So that's on the consumer side, which at the end of the day, a business is built on value. Now on the second side, from a business partner perspective, this is like a land banking, whole business philosophy. You can find land. By the way, we're backed by SBA. My Canadian friends don't even know what SBA is because such lending opportunities don't even exist in Canada. It's where you can buy land, put the build out on it for 10% total, including your startup costs. So you, you, you know, you'll find land, put the long yards model on it, your 10% in. And then after the whole thing is done, unlike a brick and mortar location, you could pack up and go to the next location, or you could pack up and sell and you still have this raw piece of land. So it's like a whole exit strategy around it that just diversifies the safety of the whole business model. Hmm. Just to remind everybody, head over to longyards.com for more information about what Chris is offering here. And so could you, let's, let's spend just a moment talking about, let's say somebody is interested in becoming a franchisee. What is that process from beginning to end? You, you mentioned you help them find the land or there's two ways about it. You've already found the land and now you're looking for a franchisee or you sure. they can secure some, an area for what you do. Can you kind of give them a breakdown of, of what to expect through that process? Yeah. So when they, one of the first things they jump on a call with us, they see the whole life map of what the long yards does. And we have checklists from literally every step right to completion, but basically to keep it simple, is that's what we do. We take someone who is either a sophisticated real estate investor and understands the power of this business or someone who meets the long yards requirements, which is a high W-2 liquidity of at least 250,000. That's more like buying the real estate. You probably could start from 125, 150 if you're doing a lease. Because here's the thing, long yards can actually lease joint venture or buy real estate. We're not just conditioned to expanding in one operation. That's one of the reasons we built out the franchise. But so basically you reach out to us, if you're interested and franchising is different. So there's a, there's a franchise disclosure document that we send off. It talks about who we are, how we work. That triggers a 14 day response. And then after that, we can either do a go long, go home, guarantee secure your territory. Or if we found real estate, once we find real estate, we're literally targeting all of our avatars in the area and traditionally doesn't last long because it's such a value add creation. So in terms of the life cycle, it's reach out to us. we we'll educate you further. So you understand it. And then we help you secure territory or build out. But it's like it's basically like a partnership and we take all the guessing away from it. You don't have surprises. You don't know what not to do. You have your control costs. We we're in the trenches with you to get it done. And it's just, I think, a great partnership and it's a lot of value to someone coming in that wants to learn more or, or like I said, is extremely experienced. That's you know, if if you sign up and you did exactly what you're seeing and you get your long boxes and you get your long yards. You mentioned you were able to put something together in as little as six weeks. Is that still the turnaround time for something like this? Like that. Okay. So if let's, we have different tiers of land we target. Different tiers of land have different costs and different timelines associated. Picture a warehouse with raw land on the side of it that's already ready to go for parking. Yes. In that case, what we call tier one land, we could be up and running in that quick because think about how fast you put up our long boxes, long offices, and you're fencing. We've got a, one of the longest time frames is actually the gate at the front. Assuming you already have a gate, it could be quicker. So in your best case, most optimized scenario, it could be in a matter of six weeks, which is kind of ridiculous. But again, if you just think about it, like, huh, that makes sense. Where a tier four land, because we, we break it into tiers, but just kind of visually, a forest. A forest that is just needs a complete site work, engineering, 
to add our model that could take anywhere from, you know, you could be three to nine months, just civil engineering and due diligence and everything. And then you're going through your construction and this is more heavy site work. So long air is broken up into phases. You've got the real estate, you got the site work, and then you have the long air on top of the site work. Where the long air is on top of the site work is very quick. It's everything below that takes a lot of time. So it's it's like a bit of a like a bamboo growing, you know, it's underneath and then boom, it goes quick. But yeah, if you want to be really fast, the land is the biggest part of it. Well, before we change into the some of the rapid fire questions, Chris, I, I need to open the floor to you. Is there a question or concept? Something that I'm missing, I, I feel like I'm missing a lot of stuff here regarding this concept, but it's really interesting. This has been a great conversation. Longyards.com to get a better insight of what's going on here. But I'll leave it to you, Chris. Is there something else that I might have missed? Well, I think one of the biggest things to touch on is actually the value this creates in the community. You know, just a it's nice talking about the real estate. It's nice talk about the value creation, the cash flow, the, the force appreciation. But at a foundational level, it's the business starts with supply and demand and the actual consumer. And you build a business around their needs. And just to touch on a little bit, it's like I was a carpenter. Again, it didn't exist. But a lot of these small businesses, it's such a thriving community for them. You know, they have everything they need. They have a community. They put their signs in the front of their yards and they're just there to support each other. That's like magic in itself. So just briefly touching on that, I mean, you know, if you're looking at the whole, what does long yards do? It's like, yeah, we help the small business. We're industrial real estate. We're self-storage. There's so many different layers to it. But at the end of the day, we're providing a ton of value to small businesses. And I think that's what's the most powerful part of it all. Okay. Well, I appreciate that additional insight. Again, it is longyards.com. But Chris, if you're ready, we'll jump into some of the rapid fire questions here. What lie do real estate investors tell themselves and sometimes to others? They call themselves a real estate investor. And if some people own a house, I'm a real estate investor. It's like, yeah, are you credited with a couple million dollars? So I would say they're telling themselves a lie by calling themselves a real estate investor. What book would you recommend or what are you reading right now? I'd recommend Money People Deal. And right now I'm working on $100 million leads by Alex Ramosi. If you could go back in time and give your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? Stop thinking, start doing. What single strategy, process, or tool have you implemented in your business that has had the biggest time-saving impact? Automations with going to level. Is there a question or concept you wished you would have covered here today? No. Well, I appreciate it, Chris. This was a great conversation. Again, it is longyards.com. And I hope you'll come back again sometime. Now I have a basic understanding of this. We could kind of dive a lot deeper into a couple of categories. I'd really be interested in your path to becoming a franchisor and the process that's associated with that. I got lots of stories I can share. It has not been an easy road and not a simple path, but it's a path worth paving. So I'm happy to jump into many topics and explore the conversation further. Yeah, great. Well, thanks again, Chris. It was great meeting you. Appreciate it, Jack.